when I see you out there, hallelujah. 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 One voice, hallelujah. What's up, NYE? Come on, God gave you a voice and two hands. Let's hear it. Make some noise. All right, that's what I like to hear. All right, so what I'm going to do for you, uh, we need to be completely silent. So let's bring it down. If you're finding your seat, just bring it down. It's nice. And I need you all to stand on up. Silently. All right, so I'm going to be walking right here in front of the stage. And when I go past you guys, you guys are going to do exactly what I do. And once I pass you, you're just going to keep doing that until I come back and give you something else to do. All right, are we ready? Give me some nods to your heads. All right, I like it. driest rainstorm you'll ever be in.
God has done a new thing. God has done a new thing. We can feel it. It has sprung forth. We can feel it. God has made a way in the wilderness. We can feel it. God has made rivers in the desert.
was. Loving Creator, rejoicing in the time we have spent together, trusting in your care for all of your creation without exceptions, we bring our prayers to you. We pray for the world around us, for those who rebuild where things have been destroyed, for those who fight hunger, poverty, and disease, for those who have power to bring change for the better and renew hope in the life of our world. We pray for our country, for those who frame our laws and shape our common life, for those who keep the peace and administer justice, for those who teach, those who heal, and all who serve the community in the life of our land. We pray for people in need, those for whom life is a bitter struggle, those whose lives are clouded by death or loss, by pain or disability, by discouragement or fear, by shame or rejection, in the lives of those in need. We pray for those in the circle of friendship and love around us, children and parents, sisters and brothers, friends and neighbors, and for those especially in our thoughts today, in the lives of those we love. We pray for the church and its stand with the poor, and its love for the outcast and the ashamed, and its service to the sick and neglected, and its proclamation of the gospel. In this land, in this place, in the life of your church, Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this new day. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always that is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, the embodiment of your love. Amen. Everybody say can hear you say, come on, say. Come on, what about this section? Right here, say. Oh. Y'all sound good out there. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Next section, say. All right, center section. All right, all right. Come on. Next section, say. forget about y'all over there. Come on, last section, say. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Now let the church universal say.
Winter Park, Florida. Nora, Connecticut. Aaron, Wisconsin. Great Falls, Montana. Bethany, Connecticut. Billings, Montana. And we are Covenant We love Covenant We love Covenant We love Covenant I've been going to Covenant Hills since I was a day camper, and I did veggie tail camp, and then I did mini camp, and then week long camps, and then last year I started working in the kitchen. I go to Silver Lake Conference Center because it is the most fun ever. I've been going since I was a baby, and it's just like a real sense of community. And when you're like struggling with something, everyone's there for you no matter what. So it's like you always feel the love no matter what's going on. You can go to church every day. You can every Sunday. You can go to youth group, but you see the same people. At camp, you see people from all over Montana and northern Wyoming, and you just meet a whole bunch of new people, and you don't get that. You don't get to go up in the mountain a lot. It's just a place where you just feel really close to God. It's like this relationship that you can't understand yeah. until you've had it. Until you until you've slept and like eaten and seen like a bunch of people for you know seven days straight and like you never are You're apart from very, each other. You don't yeah. showered very well, you don't wear makeup. Yeah. Also, another thing about why I love camp is because the food is amazing. Oh, so good. So fun. So fun. It's fun. Like, oh, it's it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's a great rules. A lot of people hear that it's like a it's like a church camp, and they figure we're just gonna you know sit around and sit on a pew, sing some hymnals, and go to bed. But it's there's like there's so many more aspects to it, and it's a lot of fun. You play play games in the field, and you meet like great people. I'm still friends with almost everyone that I've gone there with, and and uh, you know you swim and you play, and it's just it's like everything iconic about the summer that you just look forward to. Oh! It's really good for like high school and junior high students because like, we're so stuck in like drama and just everything that's going on in our lives constantly and so it's like a break where people, where everyone like is together and everyone accepts you no matter what and there's so many different people that outside of camp probably wouldn't hang out like if they're in a school setting but everyone comes together and you meet so many different people and you build a really strong community within a week. You become so close like even if you don't talk for a while like when you come back here it's just like you have it. It's like you've never left. I think it's like it's saddening that like as you can tell we love these places like so so greatly it's just that that they're starting to like dwindle away because of lack of funding and lack of adver lack of advertising the idea of in closing is like it's like, it's like, I'm like oh. starting to tear yeah, up yeah it's like, like it's like it. it's like it's like my mom is dying or something yeah. only only like almost worse <laughs> don't tell my mom that <laughs> i went to lake bird for the first time when i was about 5 years old and then to it's relocated um site in Silver Springs for, um, I was probably 7 through 12. Lake Bird was shut down uh, soon after I was there. I was pretty young, but my youth minister was actually a counselor there when it got, sh when it got shut down. And um, essentially, the Florida conference is running out of money. This is my understanding, and we just had to sell it. And um, we sold it to, I don't know if we sold it to someone, and then they sold it to developers, but whatever happened, it's currently bulldozed. The site is still there. There's nothing on it. And that was maybe 10 years ago or more. Yes, they Most need to stay open. <laughs> they have to stay open. I don't know what I would do if my camera shut down. If we had more places like that around the world, then communities would just be stronger. People would be more open to a lot of more different ideas. And it would just be a better world. If you have any interest in it, now is the time to do it because the economic times are bad, we're in a recession, things are hard right now, and camp seems like something expendable to a lot of people, but it's really not. And if you think that you might ever have an interest in camping, or that your sis sister will, or your brother will, or your cousin will, or even that your children will, now is the time to do it before the rest of the camp shut down. While we still have the system here, we really need to do as much as we can to keep what we have going strong and to add even more to it. All of you watching should go to camp. Yeah. Yeah. Go to camp. Go to camp.
Good morning, NYE. So excited to see you. Can you believe we're here? It's Friday. <laughs> I am happy to introduce you to some phenomenal youth and young adults who have been supportive of ministry for you. As you know, National Youth Event is not an event that could be planned alone. There are many partners, but we would especially like to recognize the Youth and Vision team who've helped to plan and envision this event. But I also want to introduce you to two special youth groups and young adults. We have here our Council for Youth and Young Adult Ministries, and we'll bring a very brief greeting to you. Good morning, NYE. I would like to invite all of you to visit the UCC webpage at ucc.org backslash C-Y-Y-A-M and check out more information on SIAM. I would also like to invite you all to join us at General Synod next summer in Long Beach, California. I'd like to give a shout out to other SIAM members who are out in the audience and those who are not able to make it with us this morning. And many of you know that National Youth Event is a youth event for persons who are between the ages of 13 and 18. But this NYE, we have a very special group that have joined us. They are called Mentors in Training Team. And these are young adults between the ages of 19 and 20 who love NYE so much and care so much about you that they wanted to be here as mentors in support of our youth. And they will bring you greetings followed by announcements. Let's give them love. Hi, we're the Mets. Um, here are the announcements. On page nine of the Worship and Plenary Program book, there is a list of the different conference breakout sessions. We encourage you to go to a different conference breakout session than your own. The Western region, including Hawaii, is invited to meet immediately after plenary on the north side of Elliott Hall to discuss the Western region youth event of 2014. The Honduras and Drug Trafficking Workshop will be in Stewart 314, not in Lynn. If you are missing your polls for your banners, you can claim them in the NYE Business Office. There are several lost and found items in the Business Office. If you are departing early, please turn in your keys at the front desk of your residence hall. In the event of rain tonight, pray there won't be, um, closing worship will be held in Elliott. The Indiana-Kentucky Conference will take their group picture after plenary this morning. Meet at the entrance of Elliott Hall. We would now like to take some time to acknowledge those and thank those that helped plan this event. We would like to thank the Cornerstone Fund and the United Church Fund. We'd also like to thank Purdue for letting us use this beautiful campus, the production staff, the Worship and Plenary Planning Team, the Youth and Young Adult Vision Team and their advisors, Keynotes and the Youth Keynote Speakers, the countless volunteers, Lafayette and West Lafayette Community, the Safety Response Team, the Media Team, all of the adult and group leaders, the NYE House Band, Purdue Police, And lastly, the Purdue Police and Fire Department. <laughs> lastly, we would like to thank God for this amazing opportunity to be together. And of course, we want to thank our still speaking youth. <laughs> we will now collectively show our thanks by doing the wave. Our fellow mitts will lead you in this wave. They are standing in the front of each section. The wave will go from the front to the back of the auditorium and then back to the front again.
Thank you, John. Good morning, still speaking youth. We are the Collegium of Officers, as you know. You've met four of us, and in a little while, you're going to meet Joffrey Black, our General Minister and President. We're out here in the spirit of one church, but we mostly to say a word of appreciation. Can I have the house lights? I can. <laughs> All right, so there are, there's been a cast, as you can imagine, of dozens, almost hundreds of national staff who have been working on this NYE. And we want to say a special word of, we want to say a special word of thanks, and we want you all to as well. So can national staff who are out there in the hall stand up? There's a few people over here, they're around. Give them some love. And then, of course, we want to say a special word of thanks to Walterina. Here, here. <laughs> well, and you saw Walterina giving a special word of thanks to the Holy One as well. So. Thank you, Waltrina. Thank you, national staff. And let's have a great day today. Listen up, church. Faith in one church core values. Could somebody just explain to me what all this means? Yes, we can. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll take care of this. Okay. So one church means that we came here to meet people from all over. And we've got a fabulous group of 25 people here to meet, and they help make us one church. So we're going to stir it up in some breakout this morning after the Twitter Town Hall. Yes, we are. Yes, yes we are. So these rowdy conference ministers belong to you. You recognize your conference minister up here, I hope. So. They're going to connect our UCC core values. <laughs> Got a shout out on that one. They're going to connect our UCC core values to an incredible array of diverse topics that you're going to encounter after you leave here uh, this morning. How is God still speaking on a baseball diamond? What does extravagant welcome have to do with people in Germany? How will God change lives enough to bring an end to violence and to war? So I can learn about all this and more at 10.45 a.m. So check it out. Check out on that piece of paper that you have that shows where all of these different uh, Breakout groups are happening. Make a plan for where you're going and run, don't walk. Run, don't walk. Yes, yes. safely. Yes, we will. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> okay, have fun and meet the uh, conference ministers in those groups. Thanks very much. Let's go stir it up at the breakouts this morning. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo!
It started as an empty space, like the universe, the second before God set creation in motion. Slowly, it spun itself into a concentrated spiral of matter, of things that matter. Imagination, expression, voice encapsulated in volumes of married pieces of paper. Ink that took the form of words, words, information, knowledge, freedom. A freedom that can come from the ability to open the vessels, the books, and enter their universe with an open and hungry mind. This labyrinth is your creation, your extravagant invitation to youth and children to enter the world of knowledge that literacy can offer. something like this. So I'm like really, really nervous right now. <laughs> now, now that I am like Effie from, from the Hunger Games. Do you know what he like just said in, in that movie? May the odds be in your favor. That is my favorite line from that movie. Hello, M my name is Maya Yeager, and just like the scripture says, I am about to do a new thing. <laughs> I just graduated from high school and we'll go to Metro State in the fall. Oh yeah. I would like to move away from Boro one day to try something new. But I need to learn how to be without my parents sometimes. I want to know what the adult world will be like. The scripture says, I will make a way in the wilderness. Oh my. To me, the, the wilderness is not the world. It's not the world. To me, the wilderness is not the world. Sorry about this. Um, okay. Uh, not the road, like, like from me, high school, like, like to the outside of high school. The, the, world, the wilderness feels more like a place 
Well, I question myself. Well, well, what I question what I would do for the rest of my life. I have so many passions, but how, but how am I, but how am I going to put them into, into a good job? Also, question my social life. As a person with Down syndrome, it's sometimes hard to make new friends. Making friends is difficult because people are judged by false impressions. People don't understand me. This is because, because it takes more time for me to say things. People just wait until I start talking. It is hard to fit in, and I want to be included. In high school, you have to wear the, the white clothes at the right way and be in the box. But it's not a good thing to be in a box. It is not a good thing to fake your happiness. At church, I am accepted as I am, as a person. Being part of a church has given me a, a community to, to laugh with. I can, just, I can just be silly, break out in song, or do impressions, and my friends laugh out loud. <laughs> at church, at church, I have people to share my life with. Being part of a church also means that I have to be more involved in my community, which is sometimes fun and sometimes more time commitment. Being part of a church is, is a big commitment. I have learned how to, how to commit to something bigger than me. Oh yeah, Christians can have different viewpoints and different opinions on what community is all, is all about. Some people are, some people are, are, are very strict about who should be included and who to not. In order to be one, we should accept, we should, we should accept each other as a whole. I know what it feels like to not be included. And one knows what it feels like, but people, but people do not talk about those moments. I remember a moment where I felt sad, but in the end, I learned that I was part of the community. <laughs> Several years ago, during the opening circle on work camp, we, we were having a conversation about what we were going to do for the rest of the week. My pastor, Heather Hengdorf, described the projects on what was in a center for adults with disabilities. I started to cry because I was, because I was too much to take in. I was afraid that people, I 
was afraid that people were judging me based on my disability. I was crying so much that I was stopped and stared right at me. I finally said, I don't want you to judge me. That broke the silence. Soon others were talking about their disabilities and about how they respect people with disabilities. I realized that no one was judging me at all. They love me for, they love me for like who I am. There are so many problems that we face. Each individual has a story, has a story to tell in their eyes. But you have, but like you guys have to get to know them first. seen so many people that have serious issues, but I just want, but I just want, want, want a hug in the instance of appreciation. <laughs> when I imagine the theme of one church, I dream about, about a global community striving to be better. God wants all of us to have peace in our lives, even though we have really serious conditions in different areas around the world. <sighs> wow. Uh, <laughs> my legs are like tingling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> um, um, around the world, if, if, if we combine different cultures together as a whole, then we can see something unfold into something new. There will be full wars and more peace. We can make more awarenesses. We can communicate across languages around the globe. We can communicate even, even, we can communicate even though we are far, far away by phone, email, Facebook, Skype, Text and and Twitter. Social networking, the bomb. <laughs> we can communicate about our own own opinions, our questions, our faith, our ideas and doubts. We can build a trust. We can build a better future. Thank you very much. 
God is good. All the time. God has been so good down through the ages, providing an abundance of good things for God's children. Our cups are overflowing. Our gifts this morning are one powerful way we share this abundance with one another and the world God loves through the ministry of this church. Today's offering will benefit the UCC's Ministry for Youth Programming and Programming Scholarship. As we receive these, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Stop the favor of the Lord. Say that, say. Nothing can stop the favor of the Lord. 
I can't hear you in white. Nothing will stop the favor of the Lord. Say that. Nothing can stop the favor of the Lord. I can't hear you. Nothing will stop the favor of the Lord. Say that. Nothing can stop the favor of the Lord. Come on. Nothing can stop the favor of the Lord. It's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. It's unstoppable. 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 Come on. Nothing can stop the favor. Well, good morning, NYE. It is so good to be here and to see all of you in the place. My name is Joffrey Black. I serve as General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ. And it is indeed a joy and a pleasure to be a part of this national youth event. Let me tell you a little bit about what I've heard about the NYE. I got a, a, a text message this morning from one of our conference ministers who had been out around the campus. And what she heard from the staff of the university people who have been working with you at these last couple of days is this. The UCC youth 
have been the very best. We see groups come through here all the time, but the UCC youth are special. They're different. They're kind. They're polite. They're well-mannered. And so we want you to know right away, you have made your church proud. We're not only proud of you, but we're excited about you. We're excited about all of the promise and possibility that you bring to the church and that you bring to the world. So this NYE is indeed a very special one. And today, of course, we're talking about and celebrating one church. One church, that's who we want to be, that's who we aspire to be, and that's who we are, really. One church with many different settings, one church with people of all ages, tongues, and races, and as we just learned, abilities. One church throughout the United States with partners around the world. One church in partnership with ecumenical partners throughout the world and in this country. One church, that's us. It always doesn't look that way, but indeed, in God's sight, we are one church. So I want to lift that up to you today as our, our theme and also to mention to you that technology is one of the ways that we indeed uh, celebrate or, or advance the idea of one church, the use of technology. And technology is really about the tools that people create to get things done. And people have been creating tools throughout history. The wheel was a tool. Movable text was a tool that in, allowed us to have multiple copies of the Bible so people could learn their faith. And now we're in the digital age and the technology is digital. And we're committed as the leadership of the United Church of Christ to use the tools available to us, those digital tools, to advance the gospel, to serve the people of the world today. So, my friend Barack Obama, kind of, uh, he invented this thing called a, a Twitter town hall. And when it all started out, I wasn't about to get into it, but, with the help of the national staff that you cheered just a little while ago, I now have a smartphone <laughs> and I'm on Twitter. Now I'm not going to engage the phone this morning because Tiffany is here to help me with uh, your tweets and your questions for this morning's town hall. But certainly um, we want, to, want you to know that the technology that is available to us we will be using to keep in touch with you to build the church, to carry forth the mission and the ministry of the United Church of Christ. So again, today is about one church using technology to proclaim the gospel and to serve the world. So Tiffany, what kinds of questions have you been getting from your tweets or from our tweets this day today? Um, well, we have a couple questions to start off, um, but as you are all there in your chairs, please send a tweet using this hashtag, UCC Joffrey. So if you have a question for him, send it in, and we'll do our best to incorporate it live. So the first question is probably one everyone wants to ask, but it's what has been your favorite part of NYE? My favorite part of NYE has been the people. And the favorite part of NYE is seeing all of you and the energy that you bring. Of course, there are lots of other parts that have been favorite, but favorite for me. But this morning, I discovered something else that I really like. I think one of the favorite things that I have seen here is the early morning Zumba group. Are they out there? Who's in the Zumba group? If you haven't seen the Zumba group, and if, if they're doing, I don't think they'll be doing it again, not tomorrow, but um, that was a fascinating thing to watch, and I enjoyed seeing that. But definitely, 
all of the young people of the United Church of Christ, or at least a major portion of them being in one place has been the exciting thing for me. Okay, we have a question from Twitter, and it comes from Pilgrim Faith UCC in Oakland, Illinois. Where are you guys at? Okay, Pilgrim Faith. And they have a great question. Okay. They want to know, how can we best communicate the energy and experience of NYE 2012 to our churches back home? Wow. Um, how can you best, I don't know how you can uh, take all of this back home, but you certainly can take some of it, and certainly you can take the spirit back home. Now, what is the spirit of NYE? Well, the spirit of NYE is thinking big. So think big. I think take that part of the spirit home. Take home the idea of collaboration and working together, being a team. Take that back home. And when you go back home, be emphatic and inspired when you talk to the leaders of your congregations about what you saw, what you learned, and what you experienced, and then not only talk with them about it, but demonstrate it. Share with them the music. Share with them some of the ideas that you heard from some of the speakers. Share with them the spirit. And you can use technology. Go online and show them what it was about. And then with your colleagues, with your partners in ministry, from your local church and your association, from your conference, create some NYE experiences that others who were not here can experience. So I would say that would be a way of taking it home. Take the spirit with you. Great question. Great, great answer, too. Um, all right, this has come up twice now on Twitter, okay. and it's a fun question. Um, it comes from both Megan Wallaf and also Ben Mason. You guys are asking, Joffrey, have you gone through the fountain yet? Okay. I guess there's a big fountain that you can run through and get wet and have fun. So they yeah, want to know if you've yeah. done that. Yeah. So say that again now. They want to know if uh -huh. you have run through the fountain yet. No, I, I, went, I went looking. I, I honestly went looking for the fountain. I found the fountain. I was going to run through it, but it was turned off. It's okay. on now. <laughs> okay. I'll check it out. <laughs> this has also come up. Many people are wondering, what is the Collegium of Officers of the UCC, and how do you fit into that? Okay. The Collegium of Officers, you saw them actually on stage when we said thank you to, um, to you and to the national staff and to Waltrina. Um, they are the officers, uh, the executives of the covenanted ministries of the United Church of Christ, and including the general minister and president. And what they are are executives of church agencies that carry out the mission. So we have a, um, a ministry, a covenanted ministry for local church. We have a covenanted ministry for wider church and common global ministries that reaches out to the world and um, serves in, and helps us in terms of uh, responding to disasters. And we have a uh, justice and witness ministry that really is about advocacy and carrying out the message of a church being engaged in justice work. And we have a general ministry that is what I serve that kind of coordinates and pulls together uh, all of the various ministry that we do. So those executives and I serve together as a team that we call the Collegium, colleagues working together. Great answer. Okay. okay. So here's another question from Twitter, and it comes from Neil Washburn. It's at Washburn N. I saw Neil Washburn a lot on Twitter, but what, what's he saying? <laughs> <laughs> Neil is wondering about one church, and he wants to know how can we find one church with all the different range of beliefs that we have in the UCC? Well, I think that um, one of the ways that we heard uh, last night, and I'm gonna, I, I made a note of it to myself, um, uh, and it was um, actually the idea of, of the law of entrainment. 
and the idea of our, the, the many different facets of the United Church of Christ, different kinds of local churches, conferences, associations, covenanted ministries, um, uh, our, our um, how should I say, health and human service organizations, our colleges, all those things, um, kind of finding those places where they, they connect and, and train. The one church happens in a variety of ways, but this idea of entrainment, that we operate at different rhythms, but there are moments where we are in sync with each other, is really what the one church is about. So we honor that idea of entrainment, and we celebrate it, and we build on it. It helps to strengthen us so that we always recognize the various parts of the church and seek to have them work together and to connect in, at the important points where it makes a difference in the world. So that's, I think, entrainment is a very key concept in how we might understand one church with many different moving parts. Good question. Um, the next question comes from Jaslyn Martin. Okay. And she wants to know, she says that she loved the motivational speakers and the, the motivational speakers. Okay. So MK Asante and J.R. Martinez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, I did too. So going off of that, what did you take away from those who spoke, from MK and JR and Lolisa? Okay, I, I, um, I actually made notes of a couple of them that, um, that were really important to me and striking to me, so I'm going to just kind of run through them. Um, I think that, that the, one of the key ideas, and it's very interesting to me how our, our various speakers really were, were actually hitting those moments of entrainment. They were connecting with each other. But um, M.K. Asante, for instance, talked about observation and obligation. Uh, when you observe, you know, you, you see something, you're obligated to, to act on it, to act on it, to, do, to make a change for the better. And, um, and that, I thought, was, you know, a key idea that really has implications for all of life. Um, but then I heard... Uh, from J.R. Mart Martinez, the idea of adapt and overcome. And that is something that I found to be, it spoke to me as an individual, as I'm sure it spoke to many of you, but it also is a message for the whole church that as we have encountered a time of great change, things are changing all around us, that as a church, we have to adapt to the new realities that we face and in adapting, we begin to overcome the obstacles in front of us so that we can be the church now and into the future. So I thought that was a key idea. The other one, again, I mentioned earlier was um, uh, Dr. McPhee's uh, con concept of entrainment because that helps us to understand the one church. But finally, um, Lolisa Gibson, she really... Um, touched me very deeply with her story of a tragedy and how she turned it into an opportunity to serve the world, overcoming again and adapting again to the new reality. So I think those messages can be applied in a variety of ways, and I'm certainly going home with some new ideas that came from our keynote speakers, and I hope you do the same. Okay, the next question is a next fun question. one. Okay. Next question is a fun question, and it comes from Emmy O'Dean at Plainfield Congregational Church in Illinois. And Emmy, are you here? Yay! Thank you, Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy wants to know, how fun was it to come up on the stage on that lift? Oh, man. <laughs> the lift, um, it, it was quite uh, a ride. <laughs> and, um, and I like the chair. I hope you like the chair, too. I'm not going to use it, but it's a nice chair. Um, but the lift was really fun, a lot of fun. I didn't know how you would take it. I, I don't usually arrive that way, let me tell you. Uh, um, like Asante, I'm from Philadelphia, and usually we don't have, a, you know, lifts. Um, the next question comes from Twitter, and it comes from our own Ben Guess. You can use UCC Ben hashtag. Oh, my gosh. Um, Ben uh -oh. wants to know, because he knows how much you love jazz, he asks, you used to spin jazz records on the radio. 
What's the jazz connection to the gospel of Jesus Christ? Ah, the jazz connection. Jazz, yeah, okay. Um, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's go there first. Um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is about a very, very deep spirituality and about a connectedness between human beings and God who created human beings. And Jesus came into the world pointing, always pointing to God and helping people to find the way to be in relationship with God. So what on earth does that have to do with jazz? Well, if you really listen to and watch jazz musicians do their craft, do their music, you'll notice quite often that there is a unity, a oneness that happens within a jazz group that is there um, because of intuition and spirit. Jazz is a very deeply spiritual music and the musicians are connecting with each other intuitively and responding to each other just the way that we are encouraged by Jesus to be in contact with, jo with God through our spirit. So that's one way. The other way is that jazz is about uh, sometimes call and response. And it's also about improvisation. It's also about multi-rhythms. All of these things are the kinds of attributes that are spiritually grounded and again take us back to Jesus calling us into the world to respond to conditions by always being ready to create and to improvise and to do what is necessary in the moment to make harmony, to make love happen, to make the world a better place. And ultimately, that's what jazz does. It's a music that challenges us to improvise and create as we live in the world, and it is a creative force. So two more questions I believe we have time for. Okay. And yep. this has yep. been an overarching theme coming across Twitter. Um, why are these amazing still speaking youth so important to the life of the church? Oh, wow. Okay. That, that's one that I really love to answer. Let's see. That, that has to do with some history. I think I want to say a few things about history to tie into why the still speaking youth are important. Young people in any movement that changes the world, that makes a difference in the world, young people are essential. If you think about, we're, we're about to celebrate the uh, 200th anniversary of the commissioning of the Board of Commissioners of uh, Foreign, American Board of Commissioners of Foreign Missions. And when we look at the first people who co were commissioned by our denominational ancestors to go out around the world and serve people, they were young people. They were in their late teens. And they have, they have done work that they started work that is still going on throughout the world today, but that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for the courageous young people who started that movement of mission throughout the world. That's one. If you look at the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s, yes, there were adult leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. And, and others, but if you look at who was out there marching and demonstrating and pushing the envelope for change, it was young people. It was people your age, college students. They made the difference. We believe that if the United Church of Christ has a future, it's because of the energy and creativity and the new ideas and sensitivities of young people. So that's why you are so important to this church. Got one more? No, one, got five seconds. Well, one more fun question. Okay. And um, it, this is also an overarching theme, but it comes from Lita Zakarison. Thank you. <laughs> Lita and others of our UCC Still Speaking Youth want to know, what has been your favorite part of being president of the UCC? My favorite part in a nutshell is um, 
you know, I, I have to travel throughout the United States and around the world on behalf of the United Church of Christ. I hate airports, I hate airplanes, but I love being in all of the places that the church calls me to be. And so that um, is probably um, being in those places and meeting people from around the world who share in the cost and joy of Christian discipleship or who are people of other faiths who relate to and partner with us to get good things done. That is the most exciting and enjoyable part of my work. Thank you. Thanks a lot for listening. It's been great to be here with you. Hello, Hello NYE. NYE. I am Ann Poston, Director of Communications here at the United Church of Christ. And I am Felix Carrion, the coordinator for the God is Still Speaking Ministry of the United Church of Christ. And we are thrilled to be here this morning to officially launch a special all church initiative for you, the Still Speaking Youth called the Faith In Project. The Faith In Project is inviting everyone from across the globe, from city to city, from town to town, from street corner to street corner, and then and from neighbor to neighbor, to loudly and boldly proclaim their faith in a still speaking God, and to live out the faith through mission and outreach. The Faith In Project will help you celebrate what you already are doing and spark your imagination to do even more. The Faith In Project is talking about what you are already doing, but in a new way. And to share this mission with others across the country and across the world. Promote random kindness, spruce up your town, create art, read with children, engage civic leaders, invest in outrageous ideas, celebrate diversity, advocate for justice, live your faith, love your community. The Faith in Project is a simple way for all of us in the United Church of Christ and beyond to connect with one another by lifting up our shared mission and faith. It's time to realize that no matter who you are or where you are, your part, your work is a part of something bigger. Your after-school tutoring program is a part of a global drive for literacy and education for all. Your food pantry or thrift shop at your church is a response to unemployment in this nation and an important part of our church's work for economic justice. And your cleanup campaigns are a part of our global initiative to stop taking creation for granted. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are a part of God's beloved community, a community that is ready to boldly proclaim their faith in a still speaking God. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited to be a part of the Faith In Project. I am male. I am female. I am Latino. I am Caucasian. I am straight. I am gay. I am baby boomer. I am Generation X. But we are one in Christ, and we are one in faith. We have faith in Cleveland. 
in San Diego. In Sioux Falls. In Chicago. In Orlando. We have faith in Zimbabwe. In Hartford. In Seattle. And in all of the cities and towns that you have brought here into this wonderful place of West Lafayette, Indiana. In a few minutes, when you exit the hall in the back, you'll receive a Faith in t-shirt and marker. Write in where you have faith. And most importantly, wear your shirt tonight to our evening plenary. Everyone will be wearing their, their shirt, but showing off where all 2,500 of us have faith in. And after tonight's program, you will receive a special guide with ideas on how you can get started with the Faith In Project in your hometown or wherever you have faith. We've come here today for you, the still speaking youth, to launch this exciting project across the country and across the globe on behalf of the United Church of Christ. So don't forget to wear your t-shirt tonight. It's time to put your whole faith in. Thank you. We can't wait to see you tonight. Friends, friends, before you go, we want to share a word of blessing with you. For indeed, you will be a blessing to your communities when you go back and live your faith in the places you call home. God blesses you because you are doing a ministry in the name of Jesus. God blesses you because you are people who are deeply grounded in your faith. God blesses you because you have lived and continue to live the courageous life of bringing peace to the world, the courageous life of seeking justice. God will continue to bless you as you take the messages you have learned home to be God's faithful people in places throughout this nation and the world. Go forth, my young friends, in peace, with joy, and with great thanksgiving. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, Still speaking youth from around the country, have a seat, clear the aisles, and make room for your parade of banners! We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the spirit we are one in the Lord and we pray that our unity